اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین الذي حدانا لحذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن حدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وهو أصدق الصادقين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات First of all, we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this moment and this opportunity tonight to witness the solemnizing of the marriage between two families. No doubt, a union between two families is of great importance in the eye of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we all know, there is no institution which is so dear and sacred to Allah than the institution of marriage or the union between man and woman. The verse I've just quoted, just part of the verse I quoted, no doubt we are all familiar to this particular verse of glorious Quran. As you know, if you go through Quran, there are quite a handful number of verses discussing the topic of marriage and the importance of marriage. And this is one of the verses in Quran which highlight Quranic view of a relationship between man and woman or husband and wife. Where the Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentioned, they are your garments and you are their garments. I'm sure we heard this verse quite a number of times. But tonight, inshallah, I've got a different way of something which i want to share with brothers and sisters departing from this particular verse of quran that is from quran number two verse 187 and our topic of tonight will be guide to couple meaning the discussion of tonight will focus on guiding married couples on how to become successful couples in their marital relationship because at the end of the day it's not about just marrying it's not about having a wife or having a husband the aim and the objective is to be successful in your marriage is to be successful in that relationship and what is it to be successful in that relationship that is what we're going to look at so our first stage of the examination, we will look at one fundamental importance of marriage. We've discussed here several times on some of the main on objectives of marriage within the religion of Islam. So tonight what we're going to do, first stage of the examination, there is one critical point about marriage which I want to draw the attention of each and every one of you to it. No doubt we know it, but there is no harm in reminding us so that we can always think about it and see what we can do about it. That's number one. And number two, we will look at some of the key requirements of entering into marital relationship so that we are able to achieve that fundamental aim and objective which I will highlight in my first stage of the examination. And the last but not least, we we'll look at one or two, three lessons to new married couples. How do you get into it? And how do you have to approach it if you truly want to become successful? I have no doubt in my mind, most of us sitting here, we belong to our communities. If there is one issue which most of the communities are struggling with, is the question of marriage. 
and the union between husband and wife. Meaning, we have so many social issues, but the highlight of all those social issues is marriage. Hence, it is important for I and you who are in marriage or aspiring to get married to understand what is it that fundamentally Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala want us to achieve behind our marriage. And this goes to each and every one of us. You know, today the world complain about leadership crisis. And sometimes you go to some communities, there are leadership crises. Sometimes you go to certain communities, politics is destroying it. I personally believe the only way to overcome these challenges is through marriage. Hence, it is very important for the leadership of our communities to invest more when it comes to the institution of marriage, especially to those who are not yet married and about to enter into the marriage. Once we are able to tackle that right from the word go, then you will not have a problem of leadership. You will not have a problem of who to serve the community. You will not struggle to find people to serve the community. You will not struggle when people tend to isolate themselves from giving their life and time to the community. Everything comes from parenting. And parenting comes from marriage. If we truly invest our time as leadership of our communities more and even invest our resources in having so many workshops not when there are problems at the time we jump in trying to solve it today if you go to the western world one of the challenges that people mention is broken families families are in tatters family every day in day out are getting broken so therefore, I find it important and fundamental that if you truly want to build a community for the next 100 years, for the next 200 years if you like, for the next 500 years, then we need to pause a little bit and look at the entry point into marriage. Once we get that right, be rest assured, all these crises that people are crying about, we will not see it in our lives and we will not even see it in our community. But if I and you wants to get into marital institution from your own way at the expense of the teachings of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the requirements laid down by Ahlul Bayt, then we find ourselves fluctuating, as they said in economy. You fall, you rise. You fall, you rise. You fall, you rise. So therefore, fundamentally, understand this point, brothers and sisters. It is through marriage that I and you will be able to build a very strong community. It is through marriage that I and you will be able to build strong leadership. Not just leadership. Very strong, powerful leadership. Loving, caring, and God-fearing. It is only through marriage. Community, how much can our community do? I believe our communities are there to complement the effort of families. But if parenting is not taken seriously, then we will always go back to drawing board and try to find out what is the problem. I tell you, brothers and sisters, it could be a lawful substance that youth are doing. It could be youth not coming to majlis. Because you go to many communities, you don't come to majlis. Why? I said, no, no, they don't understand Maulana. Even I said, there are youth, even if you bring Malaika, they will not come. Ah, the only way to solve this problem, attack it in advance, that is through marriage. Hence, I want all of you to give me your hearing, lend me and give me your attention. Let us come to Islam and ask ourselves, as Muslims, what are the best ways of getting into marriage? And this goes to parents and to those who propose and the matchmakers of our community and those in the matrimonial to everyone, to fathers especially and to mothers and to churches, uncles. 
The best way to propose someone or to give somebody's hand in marriage is to go through the teachings of Quran and Ahl al-Bayt If we skip that, the non-problem comes. You cannot blame anyone. You need to blame yourself. Now, there are so many in our community who don't want to get married. And one of the reasons is what? Some parents are making it very difficult. Some parents are making it very complicated. There was a gentleman who came to our beloved Sif Imam. And he said to our beloved Sif Imam, I have a challenge in the house. I have seen a lady I want to get married with. But my parents are not approval of that. What do I do? Imam asked him, what convinced you about that lady? He said, her deen and love for Allah. Then he said, then, have you thought of the reason of your father and mother? Then he said, the reason is that they know better than me, so they've got someone else, not the one I want. Then Imam called all of them and said, fear Allah in how you propose someone to your child. So the first reason as to why some young boys and girls are not finding it easier to get to marry. And this is very important, brothers and sisters. We are here to prepare for the reappearance of the 12th Imam. And there is no better way, believe me or not, not the tahajjud that you make, not the long Quran that you recite, that will pave the way quickly for the reappearance of Imam, but rather the parenting we accord and afford our children. If we are able to give good parenting, we become model husband and wife. Where each and every person aspire to be like us, then there is no way we are able to prepare properly for the reappearance of our imam. Some they make it very difficult. Number two, challenge. Which I think we need to look into ways and means of attending to it. Although it may be very personal to some. There are some girls who are not married. Why? Because she wears hijab. We have it in our communities. This is why I said we need to spend resources in educating the communities. I know of many girls. Why are you not getting married? No, no, because you are wearing hijab. The guy made it a condition that don't wear hijab and I will marry you. So the problem is we are waiting for problem to come. Then we start mediating. Let's stop that and start from scratch. Have a lot of marriage seminars in our communities. You will forget about mediating between anyone. And it's a challenge that a lover of Ahlul Bayt, be it in Africa or in Europe or in America, I've seen it. We were saying, no, so long as you have hijab, I'm not going to marry you. It's a challenge we all face, and we need to work towards that. But now, come, let's work together briefly. What are the requirements of accepting marriage proposals? Because you must understand, as a father, as a mother, as an uncle or chacha, if you follow your whim in accepting proposal, your ego, your selfish interest, you will be accountable in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you follow your whim at the expense of reality, today some girls are not married because they are, they are suffocated in the family completely suffocated today we have girls of 30 years 35 years because whoever she brought parents don't have time to think about they need that malaika and i don't know when that malaika will arrive maybe when imam was about to come the malaika will arrive <laughs> but they are suffocated completely because what is given to them is not what they cherish look at how the holy prophet of islam proposed Bibi Fatima alayhi salam to our beloved first Imam. Rasulullah is ma'soom, isn't it? Imam Amir is ma'soom. Bibi Fatima is ma'sooma. But did Rasulullah impose it on Bibi Fatima? No. Why don't we follow that? He never imposed on Bibi Fatima. We are living in a different world. The reality is something else, huh? We are not living in a hundred years ago. We are in a different world. You need to create a balance between the new and the old generation if you want to move forward. Rasulullah called Bibi Fatima. 
And he said to me before the world, can I propose Ali to you? What was your response? Aradiya bihillah wa rasulu. Is Allah and his messenger pleased with that? Messenger is asking for them. If indeed Allah is happy and Rasul is happy, then I'm okay. Today, Billahi alaikum between Allah, do we look at that? Financial, we need it. If you recently I made matlis. Today, unfortunately, some of the marriages are because of visa. Which is terrible, really. <laughs> no, 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 it's from Africa. I'm not going to give it. No, 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 no. The visa process is too long. If you have to get from Africa, it's too long. So I think we have a lot of work, including the speaker, to create a lot of awareness. For people to understand, to come to this realization that marriage is not about that, really. Marriage is to build a very formidable community that each and every person who comes to that community will envy the qualities of that community so number one from the teachings of rasulullah rasulullah taught us if you are to marry or to propose someone ensure that both the husband and wife they are compatible in terms of reasoning is someone that you can relate to is someone that you can think you haven't you see marriages three months finish why the girl i didn't know the boy properly the boy i didn't know everybody we only met at the haram of Imam Hussain and Mubarak ho ye shadi Mubarak. Muhammad, Muhammad, that I learned it from you. Don't finish. I said, why? He said, no, 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 because my mom said it's good, my father said it's good, Chacha said it's good. So they have to be compatible. That is why it's not haram. In Islam, before you take that bold decision for them to talk to one another. Ensuring that Islamic boundary is protected and taken care of. Islam agreed to that. Our fuqaha, they agreed to that. Give them the space. To, don't, don't, don't think for them. They're going to live with one another. Yes, your consent is crucial. Your consent is important. But Islam doesn't say you should impose on them. Because if you impose on them and it doesn't work out and they go out commit haram, it's your problem. Today, how many are dying from the pain of loneliness? Because there are no people to marry them. And it's not that they did not get the proposal. It's because of somebody from the family wanted to show authority. So number one, Rasulullah said, you need swahib or akl or swahib to akl. At least they should be able to reason. Oh, no, no, the boy realized, that, no, no, this is a lady that I can mentor. Or the lady said, no, this is somebody that I can mentor going forward. Their reasoning should be good. Not like you marry her, she's a slave, you are the boss. You talk, she cannot reason anywhere. There is no growth. Islam said, at least if you cannot take her to the highest level of social status, maintain the social status you find her in when you are getting married to her. At least maintain that. So now if the level of reasoning is not okay, then it's going to be a problem. So that's number one thing we need to look into that. Of course, there are so many wings to this. Second thing we need to look into, matchmakers. Because we have matchmakers and they are doing a wonderful job. No doubt. But that cannot be done only by show of photos. Huh? Photo, photo. You know, in my local language, they say when they give you photo, don't take photo serious because photo can deceive. Uh, because a person can put nice makeup on the photo and make a nice cut. And then the photo you can dream it nicely, but afterwards it's not the reality. Two, it's Dean, which we all know. The Dean, Dean doesn't mean a woman who makes tahajjud. Not a boy who makes tahajjud. Islam is not talking about that. Somebody with good akhlaq, God fearing. Simple as that. These are the people you have to go for. You may not see the consequence of it now. In future, when you grow old, ask our fathers and mothers here. They made money. They made names. But now it's not the money. It's that bond between him and the wife which they enjoy in their life. Well, now you realize that only at the latter stage, 
when food is not even tasteful anymore. So therefore, the second thing we need to consider and we need to speak about is the dean of the boy and the dean of the girl. Because the Holy Prophet made it very clear. If you choose a girl who is religious, a boy who is religious, every decision will be based on religion. Even if you have a fight, na'udhu billah, you have a friction, na'udhu billah, the decision will be based on religion. You will always refer to Allah. You will always refer to Ahl al-Bayt alayhi wasalam. Ah, number three, which is of utmost importance, is Mamba to Suwa as Rasulullah Mish. Bia, the environment within which the person was brought up. Environment is crucial. It can destroy a person. Sometimes it's not the fault of this girl. It's those who paved the way for that marriage. So Islam says, look at the environment. Where was she raised up? Where was he raised up? Who was his father? Who was his mom? Don't just look at money, 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 fame, 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 traveling, traveling, traveling. No. Look at the religious side. It helps a lot to complement any other dimension. And then, of course, number four, which Islam also is really looking at it in terms of being successful in your marriage when you choose someone for your child take somebody whom you know can administer or is got a skills of administering and this is where our community come we need to organize workshops for these young ones who are not yet married about this how to do tadbir because the only prophet made it very clear he said a good man or a good wife is someone, number one, he mentioned about two women, then he came about two women, a man. She's number one who when she spent, she spent with ma'roof. And when she hold the money, she hold with ma'roof. Meaning when she spent, she knows how to spend. She's able to manage. And if she doesn't spend, she knows. The same thing applies to man. You get a person who is taught process with that of your daughter in terms of management, they can grow. These youngsters, they need to see these newly married couples as their role models. Hence, this brings me to the second stage, which Quran I want to show you, brothers and sisters. Allahu Akbar. How Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala view marriage and marriage is the central of everything brothers and sisters no wonder we are told when you find yourself at a place where marriage is being contracted or officiated and you raise your hands high your hajat will be accepted by allah look at quran let's go back to quran and this is a known verse but as i said we're going to look at it from different dimensions Allah comes word in Quran 30 21. Which you know the verse 30 21. I don't know how many times I mentioned this verse here. Allah he started. Women ayatihi and khalakalakum min and fusikum. We stop there. Amongst his sign, khalakalakum min and fusikum. I want to just give me five minutes, will be done. He created you, Ajibra. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Mick? It's a deal. <laughs> Allah, if you look at this ayah, and I want all married people, when you go back home, you have time, look at this ayah. And look at different interpretations. Allah used the word nafs and fusakum. He created for you from yourself. It's just direct translation. Nafs which Allah used in this verse, simply translation means self. Self. Question. Does it mean a woman is created from man? Or does it mean man is created from woman? It's marriage. Which of course Imam Jafar openly said woman is not created from man, not even from the rib of a man. She's not your property. You are one single existence. 
woman, husband, no superiority, no inferiority, according to Islam. You are one single existence. So what does it mean? Allah said, nafs. Nafs simply means that woman, she is yourself and you are herself. The moment you get married, your woman is yourself and you are herself. In other words, as I was, I mentioned this in Mombasa, any kindness you do towards your wife, you are doing it to yourself and not her. And vice versa. It's not a favor that you give food to your wife. It's not a favor that you prepare something for your husband. The moment you've accepted to be in that relationship, you become self of one another. Now question. Why does Quran use the word self? It's not only in this verse. There are about three, four verses, if I'm not mistaken. Allah used the word self. Self meaning was when you share things in common. Sharing things in common are of different kinds in Quran. One of them, if you are from the same Kabila, huh? Khoja, Khoja. Barabarche, huh? Uh, Punjabi, Punjabi. Quran used the word self. Where? Rasulullah. Lakad ja'akum rasul min an fusikum. Allah said the Rasul is min an fusikum. From yourself. He's trying to say, look, you are Quraysh and he is Quraysh. Quraysh, Quraysh. So he is yourself. You are his self. So why worry? Why you want to backstab him? You are one. The second area is not only sharing Kabila, but when you share almost everything together right from the beginning of creation until the end that is the situation between imam amir al-mu'minin and rasulullah when ourself and yourself what does it mean yani i'm self of ali at least myself meaning we share everything in common right from our creation up until the end and the last one is marriage. Min anfusikum azwaja. That woman, she is amanat in your hand, by the way. And you are amanat in her hand. And when Allah says she is yourself, you are herself, you know what does it mean? It means there are certain things you need naturally. And no one else will be able to give you that except woman. Not what you guys are thinking about, by the way. I've got four things. Uh -huh. Those things, you go up and down, you come. Yes, you may get it in Salah if you are that stronger. Arif, Sufi, by the way. <laughs> but it's difficult. <laughs> what is the first one? Naturally, we need peace, isn't it? Naturally, everybody needs peace. Wallahi, the best way to get peace is through marriage. Allah said, let us kunu. Naturally, I need peace. So like Ali Abbas Maliha, Wallahi, you are going to be people who are going to pave the way for the reappearance of the Imam of our time. Get into the institution properly. Good fitting. Go there for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Ali Al-Bayt. Treat each other properly according to the teachings of Islam. Nobody will hear your voice, not even your father or your mother. Marriage is the best thing to have in life. It's the nicest thing you can have in life. But if you don't do it properly, that's the time it tends to be like the worst thing that we have in the community. So number one, you need peace. You will not get peace anywhere. I promise you, not your dad, not your mom. Woman. Woman or husband, that's number one. Two. Naturally, you need to love and you need to be loved. Naturally, everybody requires that. You don't want to be loving and nobody show you love. Huh? Shabir uncle. Chaman, you talk, people also have to show something in return. See you? Or else the problem. Now, Quran said, marriage can give you that. Where? Ja'ala baynakum mawadda. Mawadda. Mawadda, two-sided. You know about this thing. We spoke about mawadda of Ali al Meaning, you need to be loved and you need to love. 
Look, your father can show you that love, but not like the way your wife and your husband can show you. <laughs> that of the wife and husband is unique. It's unbelievable. Look, you open your test from stress of the work, occupational stress, and your wife wrote, John, I miss you. How do you feel, Banna? You feel good. Like, you know, the happiness of Ali Abbas and Malia tonight is different from us. We may be dreaming, but they are in the world of reality. Number three, naturally, you need at least to be tolerated sometimes when you are wrong. You don't want any time you are wrong, somebody point fingers to you. Quran said to Rumari, it is easy. Rahma. What is the Rahma? That the Rahma is one-sided, isn't it? Sometimes we share one roof together. Sometimes I commit mistake. Why not? Don't worry. It's not a big deal. And the last one. Naturally, you need to be protected from harm, isn't it? Allah said, Hunna libasullakum wa antum you have to be all better protect you from harm except the husband and the wife. <laughs> so therefore, brothers and sisters, the conclusion what I'm trying to say is that marriage is something that we need to focus on. We need to really look into marital relationship. And we need to help out to ensure that we create a lot of awareness so that people, inshallah, they enjoy their marriages and they benefit from their marriages. And in conclusion, in conclusion, brothers and sisters, there are Islamic etiquettes when it comes to marriage. Like we have our gentleman and the lady who are marrying today. But let this serve as a lesson to all of us. Islam made it very clear. There are certain things that you need to do immediately if you want to be successful. Number one, the boy and the girl, this is Islam, but I cannot explain it on the member properly. This is on the shoulder of the family, the husband, the boy's family and the girl's family. You have to teach them and advise them, which is happening, but it has to be more. Especially with the girls, it's happening, but with the boys, I'm not sure. Because every girl, she's coming from different family. And every girl has got her own terbia. Sometimes in terms of spending quality time might be very difficult. This is an area where animosity begins. In terms of spending quality time, if they are not educated properly and they are not taught the principles of tagaful, just forget about it. Just take it easy. Poleni sana. Kidogo kidogo. If they are not taught that and they are allowed to start living like that, it may not go well. That's number one. And that's the duty of the parents and the elders of our community. That's why I'm of the opinion that each and every community, we need to have premarital counseling, during marriage counsel, and post-marriage counsel. This has to be part and parcel of our system. Whenever there is something like this, we have to go through this. That's number one. Number two, of course, is Mustafa Jamali. You know, as man, you need to keep your beauty, and a woman has to keep her beauty. And when I talk of beauty, this is based on the teaching of Alil Bay. There are three things that comes to mind. Number one, cleanliness. Cleanliness is crucial, it's fundamental in Islam. Our beloved chief Imam said, Oh men, prepare for your wives in terms of cleanliness, the way you expect them to prepare for you. Bilal Ali, how many times some men, we don't care about this thing. And this matters to women. He come from work, the clothes, he calculated money with it. Allah, I was going to sit and start chatting. Bring me food. And you expect her? No, Imam Jafar said no. So that's number one. Number two under beauty is, you know, your style of approaching her. Is also of great importance. If you expect your woman to dress in a certain way, the same thing Islam expects you to do so. And of course, the last one is utter, which you have so many rewire. That of course, there is no israf in even using utter, by the way. Whereby you want her to smell nicely, why you don't want to do that? This is what these are simple things, but it takes the relationship further and further and further.
And lastly, my brother, when the woman is brought to you on that first night, which is Layla to Zafaf, you have to start on a right footing. And this, inshallah, when you have seminars in the communities, all these things have to be taken care of in advance. Where you know for sure you have to perform two rakat salah. And then, of course, you place your hand on her forehead. We have three du'as, three different du'as from the riwayat. But the simplest one, you place the hand here. After placing the hand on her forehead, you make a du'a. Ilahi bi amanatik akhastuha. This is very important message. Allah, it is through your trust that I've taken this girl. Meaning Allah is witness. You cheat her, Allah is witness. You ignore her, Allah is witness. You spend time with your phone at her expense, Allah is witness. You make your work more priority than her, Allah is witness. You make your friends and Mira priority over her, Allah is witness. You make Baraza priority over her, Allah is witness. You make playing football priority over her, Allah is witness. Allah, I made it lawful to me through your name. It's a wash to Isn't it? So it is through your name or else it was haram to you. So the name that made it lawful to you, you have to respect that name by respecting the woman. And then of course you make dua. Allah, if you bless us with a child, this is my point. If you bless us with a child, Allah make that child taqi. God fearing and make him amongst the Shia of Ali Muhammad. And don't let Shaitan has portion in him. Once you make this dua, we have a reward that said you take water, you wash her feet. Ah, we must love this one I mentioned. <laughs> you wash her feet. You know why? Baraka is from water. Like you visit your loved ones in grave, you sprinkle water. You wash the husband, eh? Ali Abbas, huh? You wash the feet. <laughs> and last but not least, you take water, you sprinkle all over the room. Imam Jafar said, if you do this, feet sprinkling the water, Allah will bring 70,000 baraka to you. And 70,000 bala and fitna that may occur between you and the wife will be lifted. And 70 forms of rizq will be provided to you. So therefore, inshallah, brothers, let's try, inshallah. And let's work very hard. It's half of the deen. And half of the deen is not a joke, but nah. It's not only kabil to tazwija ala sadaq al-malum. Then half of the deen is <laughs> We ask Allah to forgive us, inshallah. We ask Allah to Allah to bless this relationship. And all those who are aspiring to get married, we ask Allah through the barakat of this marriage to make it easy for them. And we ask Allah to bless them with zuriyatan tayyibah. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin tahirin.